Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have a Lenovo ThinkBook 16. This is going to be the Gen 6, the Intel model. I'm going to take you on a quick teardown and disassembly tour, open the computer up, and show you some of the various components you can access when inside. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip it over to access your bottom case screws. Now you have a total of nine screws. These four along this edge here, these screws actually come out. The rest of the screws, these three on top and these two in the middle, those screws are gonna stay in the bottom case even though they've been unscrewed from the, the threading. After that, I found it easiest to use my pry tool and start from the back and pry this edge up first and then work my way down the sides towards the front. I recommend a plastic pry tool because metal will tend to scratch this case a bit more. Go all the way around and if you get stuck in one spot, just leave it to go to the other side and pry it up from this seam right here. Once you get your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a general computer repair side note guys, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging the computer you're working on. If you need any help with any tools or supplies for your computer project, as well as any replacement or upgrade parts for this specific model, ThinkBook 16, there'll be a link above. Also below in the description, It'll take you to a list of all those replacement upgrade parts, as well as the tools and supplies you may need to work on this computer. Now, before touching anything in a computer, you want to at least unplug your battery first. It makes the computer safer to work on when as little power as possible is running through it. So here's your battery right there. It's held in by five screws. You got these three on top, these two near the bottom corners. And after you remove those screws, it plugs into the motherboard right here. Now, as with any cables in a computer, try to avoid pulling on the cables when at all possible. Manipulate just the plug if you can. So this one didn't have very large grips. You can try to use a pair of pliers to grab it, but you may have to grip those wires very, very securely. Try to get as much of your finger on, on the black plug as you can and gently, slowly wiggle that out to get that out. Now the battery specs on this, the Lenovo model number for the battery was an L22D3PE0. Um, this was a stock 45 watt hour battery, 11.52 volts. Now you can upgrade this battery. The upgrade version is 71 watt hour. So that may be a nice upgrade if you guys are looking to do that. I will try to have those battery upgrade and replacement options below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement parts. And I guess last side note with this computer repair here, if you're here because your computer's not turning on, um, no power, it seems like it's dead, you could need a new battery or it could be something else wrong with the computer. Um, I will have a video link above, also below in the description, it'll be a tutorial video on how to troubleshoot a laptop that seems like it's dead, it's not powering on, um, or you only see some LEDs here and there but nothing on the screen. I'll have that video showing you how you can fix that type of problem. Now that the battery has been removed or at least unplugged, it's safe to proceed deeper into the computer. In this computer, you have two solid state drive M.2 ports. You'll see this one unused here toward the right of my screen. It goes down and screws in here next to the speaker. And then most of you will have one here, this one kind of at an angle near the fan. Uh, most of you will have this stock in the computer and you'll have the 2242 version, this shorter solid state drive there. And they use an extender, an extender metal bracket to screw down here. So to remove these, again, you would just remove that single screw. This would come out of the port, same thing here. Um, and if you guys want to upgrade to the 2280s, um, the larger solid state drives, this computer supports Gen 4 solid state drives. So most of you will have a 256 gigabyte uh, 2242 drive in here like you see in this picture. So below in the description in that link I told you about with all the replacement and upgrade parts, I'll try to include a 256 gigabyte 2242 drive 
in case you guys just want to replace yours. But if you do want to upgrade, I'll also include several options for the larger 2280s. I'll include a 500 gigabyte, um, a, a terabyte option for those of you that want to upgrade. I guess the last thing to shout out about this operation is if you are installing a new solid state drive, you're probably going to have to install a new version of an operating system on it in order to use your computer. Uh, there'll be two video links below in the description. One, I'll show you how to install Windows 10 for free. And the other one, I'll show you how to install Windows 11 for free. So whichever one you want, I'll have both links below in the description. Your RAM is right here under this black guard. After you peel that guard back, you'll reveal these two RAM ports right there. So most of you will have the right one empty and an eight gigabyte stick in the left one stock from the retail store. Now the way you operate the RAM, there's a spring-loaded metal arm on either side, top and bottom in this case. You gently pry those apart from each other away from the RAM stick. The RAM stick will then release. Oftentimes it will pop up a little bit and you can grab it and slide it to the left out of this port. The way to plug RAM back in, as you notice, there's a long side to the port and a short side. So the RAM can only go in one way. You can't put it in upside down. And after you get it in nice and straight and flush and even, you just press in the center down and these metal arms will latch onto it and secure it into place. Now this computer has a maximum RAM capacity of 64 gigabytes. So there's plenty of room to upgrade this from the eight that many of you will have stock. Below in the description, I'll have that link I told you about with all the replacement parts and upgrade parts. I'll try to have several RAM options in there. For those of you that are just looking to do a small upgrade, I'll have an eight, another eight gigabyte stick and a 16 gigabyte stick that are compatible with this computer. For those of you that wanna max the RAM out, I'll have a full 64 gigabyte kit, which would include two 32 gigabyte sticks. And I always recommend people to max out your RAM if you want the best performance. RAM is a huge part of the speed factor of your computer and maxing out your RAM is probably one of the easiest and cheapest things to do to maximize that kind of performance. Your CMOS battery is right here. It's this silver round watch looking battery on the left of my screen, and it's set in this port right there. Now to take this battery out, there's some springs right in here on the bottom side of that port, and you can get a small flat, preferably plastic pry tool in here in that groove, and you can push this battery down toward this side of your computer to push those springs in. And then this battery will come out from under these two clips and the battery can then release. Uh, be very careful when taking out that CMOS battery. This section right here on the bottom that's holding the battery down, that's very fragile. And, and if you push the battery down and try to pop it up too severely, this section here can snap off and then the battery won't be able to stay in, in place. So just FYI, be careful when removing that battery. That's how you would remove the CMOS battery if you're, if you're looking to replace it. If you guys are here to reset your BIOS system, all you would have to do is remove this CMOS battery for maybe 15, 20 seconds, and that should be sufficient to reset your BIOS system settings. As a quick reminder, this in most cases will not reset your BIOS password this will just reset your BIOS system settings. So if you're looking to reset your password, this operation probably won't do it. I'll have more information about resetting the password down below in the description. And I guess as a last side note to this kind of operation, if you're here to troubleshoot why your computer isn't turning on, maybe it's dead, no signs of life, uh, maybe you just see some LEDs, some lights, but no other signs of life. And you heard that this BIOS reset could be a way to revive your computer. That is true, but there are other things you can do as well to troubleshoot why your computer is not turning on. Above, as well as below in the description, I will have a video link. It's a tutorial showing you how to troubleshoot a laptop that won't turn on. Um, it'll take you through the most common, the easiest fixes of why a laptop won't turn on, um, including this BIOS reset, but along with some others too. You have this speaker here, this L-shaped speaker on the left of my screen, and it's connected by these wires that run down here to the right speaker on the right side of my screen right there. And this speaker is the one that plugs into the motherboard right here. 
So these speakers are not actually screwed down, guys. You see these orange rubber washers that just sit over these posts for sound insulation? Uh, that's all that's holding them down. So you can just wiggle that speaker off carefully and they come right up. If you are replacing these, make sure that when you put this wire down, make sure you run it exactly how it's seen in your computer. Because remember, the bottom case will snap down on these snaps and screw in here. So if these, if these wires are not in the at exact correct place, they could get pinched by your bottom case and it could break them. So just a shout out there, make sure these wires are run correctly. This wire that plugs into the motherboard, you'll see a grip on either side. So you don't have to pull on the wires here. You can use your fingernails or a pry tool and pull that out of the port right there. That is how you access your speakers in this model computer. As a last shout out about this operation, if you're having sound issues in your computer, if the sound is a little dim, if it's not working correctly, you could need to replace your speakers, but it could be something else. Uh, oftentimes it's a driver issue or a software update issue. They'll have a link above, also below in the description. It'll be a video tutorial, how to make sure all your drivers are up to date, how to make sure your system is fully updated, uh, so you can rule that out before coming in here to replace your speakers. However, if your speakers, if it's that obvious blown sound where every time your bass kicks in, your speakers just sound like junk, uh, most likely, yeah, your speakers are blown and they need to be replaced. The Wi-Fi card is right up here above your RAM area. After removing this black shield, we'll have a little better view of it. It's in this port here. It's held down by a single screw and then you have your antenna wire that, that snap onto it. These antenna wire guys, they're just snaps. They snap directly up and off of the Wi-Fi card. And to snap them back down, they do have to be at an exact 90 degree angle for you to snap them back. Um, and if they're not at a 90 degree angle and you put too much force on it, you could damage them. So it may take a while if you're not used to it to get them exactly right and snap back on, but they are doable. You can do it. Uh, you would then undo this screw and then pull the Wi-Fi card to the left out of this port. That's how you would access your, your Wi-Fi card. So just as a last shout out for this type of repair, um, if you are having Wi-Fi issues in your computer, if you can't find any networks, your Wi-Fi card could be bad and it may need to be replaced, but the issue could also be something else. Uh, your Wi-Fi card may be okay. So above as well as below in the description, I'll have a video tutorial showing you how to troubleshoot Wi-Fi issues because you may not need to necessarily replace your Wi-Fi card. This is your single fan here, attached to your heatsink assembly that comes over here, over the CPU, and your vent right there. Now over here is your RAM, and there's a black guard over it. That will actually expose more of the heatsink assembly, so we're gonna go ahead and take this black guard off. So there's your heat sink assembly. You've got three screws here, and then you got some screws on the fan. And the fan plugs into the motherboard right here. And just like I mentioned earlier, try not to pull on wires in a computer, especially fan wires. These are very fragile, very easily broken. You can see the grip on either side of that plug. So use your fingernails if you can get it in there. Uh, what I did is I use a small flat plastic pry tool to slowly jimmy that out one side at a time. But that's how you can get your fan out. That's how you can access your heatsink assembly. If you guys are in here because of an overheating issue, or if you're here to reapply thermal paste, there'll be a video link above. Also below in the description, it'll be a tutorial in how to address an overheating computer. Uh, you want to clean out your fan, clean out your vent. And if you are reapplying thermal paste, you definitely want to clean all the old stuff off very well. You don't want new paste on top of old paste. And then when you put new paste down, you don't want too much. So again, there'll be a video link below. It'll be a, a tutorial in how to do that inside a computer. So that's the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share. Subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials. 
And for those of you that want to support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation. And there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app. Find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.